Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 657. I'm Kristen Amdahl, and we are here live in Southwest Florida in my beautiful tropical backyard. If you are joining me live, please say hello. If you end up watching the recorded version, please also feel welcome to say hello. I uh, get notified from all of those comments throughout the day as well. Good morning, Joe. Thanks for joining live. What day is it today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Thea. Good morning. Hi, Rita. Hi, Jill. Good morning, Grace and Judy. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me live. I'll show you what I'm working on in a minute. I want to get through this one motif. Hi, Sean. Hi, Constance. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Chris. Hi, Irene. Hi, Christine. Hi, Melissa. Good morning. Ah, did I forget my scissors? I might have forgotten my scissors. I might have to go back in and get my scissors. Hi, Susie. What did she say? Hi, Jane and Tammy. Oh, Susie got a yarn order for me. Yay. Jill, I'm wearing a dress. I'm wearing the Thalia dress. I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find my scissors. If I can't, I'm going to run inside for a second. I'll be right back, everybody. One second. Hi, Geraldine. I'm back. I had several things to carry this morning and I didn't remember all of them. Oh well. Uh, so where were we? Let's see. Hi Lily and Irene and Carrie. Uh, sorry if I missed anybody's names. All right, so I wanted to grab my little miniature mannequin today and I'll tell you why in a minute. Hi Mariana. Hi John. Hi Diane. Good morning, everybody. So I'll show you what I'm working on in a minute, but in the meantime, I know people are asking about what I'm wearing, and because of the way the camera is, it looks like I'm wearing a top. I'm really wearing a dress. So I'll back up my chair for a second so you can see I'm wearing the Thalia dress with um, a, a coral dress underneath it for a liner as we've talked about before um, slips aren't really easy to find anymore so i find that find wearing a fitted dress underneath the crochet or lace open work dresses works really well as an underlayer slip and then doubles as a dress that you can wear any other time as well. And they come in so many different colors when you're looking at dresses rather than slips that you actually have a lot more styling options. You can still get traditional colors in dresses that you could in slips. You can still get nude and white and black, and I still buy those as well, but you can also buy bright colors. And I think that it's so much fun to change the color of the underlayer of your dresses when you wear open work stuff like the Thalia dress. So today I'm wearing the Thalia dress in Be So Fine Yarn and Colorway Chantilly Lace, which is that perfect summer crochet lace color for a dress, just so classic. And I'm wearing the, an underlayer dress in coral. And to tie it all together, I'm wearing the Alicia earrings that also have some coral pink and uh, coral, it's tropical hot coral, crushed berries and pink dragon fruit, so three different colors of pinks and corals, and I feel like it ties the whole thing together. Um, 
let's see if there were more and judy's posting links to everything i've mentioned so far and i've also updated the video description as well as the fixed comments below the video so if you want to come back later and find those links they're all there as well i have links for the thalia dress pattern the alicia crochet earring pattern and the underlayer dress that i'm wearing as well uh, I did not post links to the shapewear that I'm wearing, but if you go to my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash Kristen Amdahl, I also have links to several different types of shapewear that um, I personally love for wearing under fitted garments like this. Like, I'm wearing shapewear this morning, the kind of, can't show you, obviously, that would be kind of crude, <laughs> but I'm wearing the kind of shapewear that starts here, and it's fitted through my waist, and it actually is pant. Oh, actually, I could show you from here. You can see that it actually comes down to being shorts. So my shapewear starts up here. It sucks in my belly. I mean, it, I could use a little more work in my hips, but whatever. <laughs> and so it just sucks in my belly a little bit and smooths out my bumps, which I think is very flattering because especially on a lighter color like this, the lighter color meaning the... Um, the coral underlayer as well as the white dress, I think that it is less forgiving than wearing dark colors. Like for example, someone asked recently, um, in fact it was Joe. Joe was asking me what color to wear under her Thalia dress. She made the dress in a darker blue and she said what color should she wear for her underlayer and I said the darker you go with your underlayer the more forgiving the lo overall look is and that's not to say that she has more bumps or um, rolls or imperfections that I do it's just we all have human bodies that have imperfections and depending on how much you want to see or not see them the rule of thumb is go darker if you don't want to see them please don't take offense to that joke because i know i'm bigger than you anyway so i know this is a bigger issue for me i'm just saying in general that's always the rule of thumb that i use when someone asks me about what kind of colors to put with something darker is always more forgiving than lighter however when you want to wear lighter colors or brighter colors and you're not confident about the shape or imperfections of your body i say shapewear is the way to go um, no, Dave, lighter shows more imperfections, uh, it's, at least with this. So if I were wearing, uh, if this were, if these were darker colors, I, you wouldn't see um, the rolls in my belly as much. So, <laughs> so for me, if I'm going to wear lighter colors, it's an absolute necessity to put on shapewear first. Uh, but at the size I am now, if I like to wear fitted things, I still wear shapewear under fitted things. <laughs> oh, Dave learned something to be a better hubby. Okay, good. No, I think for the underlayer, Dave, that's what I'm getting at. Like if I were to wear a navy blue slip underneath this dress, I think it would my my imperfections would show less. It's the lighter underlayers. Like it'd be right in here. You could see the rolls in my underdress more in the lighter color than you could in the darker color. So if I were wearing a navy uh, underlayer, I could possibly get away without Spanx, but I wouldn't. <laughs> when I wear fitted things, I like to wear Spanx instead, or Spanx or shapewear. There's different types of shapewear out there, but uh, anyway, uh, hi Erica, happy birthday. Hi Naomi, hi Kim, hi Angela. Lily, I am very used to wearing shapewear. Um, it is something to get used to and uh, picking the right size is important as well. If you go too tight in shapewear, it can be very constricting and make you feel uncomfortable. But when you find the right size and you get used to it, um, and again, it depends on how much you want it or need it. I have come to really appreciate what shapewear does for me. So therefore I get used to it. It's easier to wrap my head around it and get used to it. I mean, anything constricting isn't amazing, I guess, but uh, you get used to it. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions about what we've talked about so far? I'm back to wearing my hair in an old style that I used to do a, a couple years ago before I cut bangs. I twisted the front, like kind of like a, a version of a French twist, not a French, 
Yes, I've tried Shaper Mint. Um, I have a link to one of their uh, products in my Amazon shop as well. I have Spanx and Shaper Mint, and I think they're both great. Um, I think Spanx is a little more structured, but um, they're both great. Uh, and the key to using them is to washing them by hand. You do not want to throw shapewear into the washing machine. The, uh, the elastic will break down much quicker over time with harsh chemicals and heat and agitation. So it is something that you really want to wash by hand. So what I wanted to mention is my hair. I did like a, fr you know, when you French braid, you pull little pieces at a time. Well, I did a twist, but like pulling little bits at a time. So it's a French twist from here to here and from here to here. And then I put sea salt spray in the back to try to get it a little bit of a beachy wave, but I didn't put enough curl in it first. And as you can see, it's already fallen out. But um, it reminds me of the way I used to do my hair a couple years ago on the beach for Yarn on the Beach podcast, actually. So I'm excited to see my hair coming back to this look again. Thank you, Rose. Let's see, Anna, good morning, Anna. All right, so for those of you that have not seen yet, uh, I see my hair from the other angle. So once I did the twist, I secure them with a bobby pin here and here. And again, the back, the back didn't hold, so I need to do that a little better next time. Anyway, uh, so if you have not already seen, I have a new playlist here on YouTube and three videos that are going to start premiering in about 40 minutes. So uh, yesterday I had talked to you about making some new videos and trying to figure out where the gaps were in the existing patterns that didn't have videos. And somebody had brought it to my attention that that beautiful Brooklyn crochet shawl from Motif Magic didn't have video tutorials yet. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's such a beautiful shawl and it has such a different construction method to it. It's not difficult to do, but it is different than maybe something you've done before. So I thought it was actually a fantastic uh, candidate for making a video series. And so after the podcast yesterday and after shipping, I spent the rest of my day working on the Brooklyn Crochet Shawl video series. And so there will be three videos premiering, one at 10, part one will be at 10 a.m., part two will be at 10.15, and part three will be at 10.30, and I will be joining the chat live. It will be a live premiere, so if you have questions while you're watching, um, I will be there with you, and I can show you a little bit of the step outs. I was hoping to finish this uh, this morning to put on my little miniature mannequin. You know my little cutie. Oh, where is she? You know my little cutie mannequin. She still has the Paloma pullover and the, uh, oh shoot, what did we call this cardigan? <sighs> I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> so she's wearing two of the two projects and I'm going to show you the step outs that I have created for the Brooklyn crochet shawl. So in the video series, in the first video, I show you how to make the first motif. Then in the second video, I'll be showing you how to work rows of triangle band from the motif working forward in rows, not rounds and also doing top down increasing. So we'll do a single increase on the end of rows and a double increase in the center. And then after we finish that band, then I'll show you how to then go back and make motifs and join them as you go to each other and join them to the edge of the rows, which is something that you may not have done before, worked motifs and uh, rows of a stitch pattern in bands and work them together. And so once you learn how to do these three components of the shawl, you'll then be able to go back and refer to the pattern to finish up the second band and then the third band of motifs. So this will end, this is a miniature version, so I thought the miniature would be super cutie on our little mannequin. Won't that be cute on her? <laughs> it really is. Yes, it's the Brandy cardigan. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, so I've got, let's see if I've got one, two, three, four, five. I have, 
how many more two more motifs to go and this will be finished at least the miniature version will be finished for her but isn't that gorgeous i just i think this is such a beautiful shawl and it's not difficult to do you can download the pattern on my website if you already have the book motif magic you already have the pattern and if not you can download the brooklyn crochet shawl for only $1.99 on my website. It comes with written instruction as well as charts and detailed schematics. And as of an hour and a half from now, there'll be a three-part video series that you can watch as well. So we're going to be premiering. Uh, this is done in two balls of Be So Sporty yarn. You could probably do it in Be So Fine yarn as well. It would be one ball of Be So Fine yarn or two balls of Be So Sporty yarn. Uh, I used 650 yards of Be So Sporty yarn, which is number two sport weight, and that is two balls, which would be great for mixing colors as well. You could do the motifs in one color and the bands in another color, or you could just mix and match as you go. That would be fun. Or you could do it all in one color as well. But I, mine is done in Be So Sporty yarn with a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. And uh, Jill, this is, uh, this is the step out sample from uh, making a video series of the Brooklyn Crochet Shawl. The three part video series in right hand will be premiering this morning, live premiere at 10 a.m., 10.15, and 10.30. And then at noon today, the left hand videos for all three of those will upload without a live premiere. They'll just upload into that same playlist. So you'll get a notification of that. And if you're not interested in left hand, then don't watch it. If you are, then do. Uh, and then in that playlist for the Brooklyn Crochet Shawl, all six of the videos will be in there going forward. And they are also embedded onto the pattern page. So if you ever need a handy place to find them, and you don't want to look on YouTube, you want to look on my website, the pattern page also has the video series embedded there. So hopefully you can join me live. That'll be at 10 a.m. So it's now, if you're figuring out what time it is for you, it's uh, about 45 minutes from right now is when the first video will premiere. And they're under 15 minutes each, so I premiered them 15 minutes apart. Thanks, Adele. Thanks for all the links, Judy. I appreciate it. And if anybody needs help finding anything, please let me know. Judy's posting live links right now to everything that I'm talking about if you want to see it right now. And if you want to come back to look for the links, I've updated the um, video description for today's podcast. And I've also updated the comments in the fixed comments. And it's pinned, so if you come back and watch the video later, those comments already have all of the links of what I'm talking about today as well. So you can find the Alicia Earrings there, the, the Alicia Earrings crochet pattern, the Thalia crochet dress pattern, the underlayer tank top dress that I'm wearing, and then links to both the Brooklyn crochet shawl pattern and the Brooklyn video series that we're going to live premiere today. Yes, it's called Brooklyn, Jill. Hi, Michelle. Does anybody have any other questions? My hair feels so different today. Oh, it's exciting to have new hairstyle. I feel like I haven't tried a new hairstyle in a while. It's exciting. I like variety. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Yes, Carrie. The, so the two pieces that are on my um, miniature mannequin right now are the Paloma Pullover. These are the miniatures that I've done while making videos uh, series. And then this is the Brandy Cardigan on top. Adele wants to know what the pattern is for the white vest. You mean the white dress? Um, yeah, we've talked about it several times already today, but that's okay. I'm happy to show you again. This is the Thalia crochet lace dress pattern, and there are links in the live chat in the video description, as well as the fixed comments for where to find the pattern. And there is also an, uh, a video playlist for making the Thalia in uh, a dress or in a tunic and you can find that playlist embedded into the Thalia crochet 
pattern page and you can also search for it here on my YouTube channel. Christine would like to see me do my hair on camera. Yeah, that's a great idea. So um, I've been talking to Marlon about that, trying to figure out what the best way is to help people with um, things that aren't, you know, the requests that I get that are things that I wouldn't necessarily do during the podcast. So would you rather me do separate videos on doing my hair or doing my makeup or would, cause I get requests for it a lot. And, or would you rather me start the podcast without my hair done or without my makeup done and do it there? I like, I'm not sure how to do that. Yes, Adele, you can make this as a top and the pattern and the video both explain how to make, I mean, it's a top down construction. So you could end the dress much shorter if you wanted to, but you can also watch, um, but you could also watch the video tutorials to learn how to do that as well. Lorraine says separate. I think it would be more organized to do the hair and makeup stuff and other things like that as videos, but would you prefer them to be live or video as well? I didn't say what scale my mini mannequin is, but um, I would say she, from shoulder to hip, she's no more than 12 inches, um, maybe closer to 18 full with the uh, stand, but uh, I would not know what size that is, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's designed for displaying jewelry. It's um, it's not really, it's not a doll or anything. Yeah, I agree, Jill. I think they'd be easier to set up in a separate playlist to do as separate videos. I'm just wondering if you would prefer them to be live or edited videos. I think they might be better instructional videos if they're not live and I can actually edit them. Um, that's what my idea is. Hi, Sonia. The hardest part I've had to figure out is um, tripod and camera angle. That's been my issue. So that's why I've uh, that's why I've discussed it with Marlon. I think I actually need a videographer to do those types of videos because I can't see what stays in the camera when I'm not looking at the camera. Yeah, I'm sure there's some things you could learn from live and video. That's true too, Dave. Or we could just even do live premiere of the video so that you can ask me live while watching together too. So that might be the best of both worlds. But yeah, I'd be more than happy to share that because people are interested. No problem, because it's really quite easy to do. Easier than you might think. Uh-oh, people are starting to talk about food. <laughs> Shrimp scampi sounds good to me, too. Thank you, Sonia. I love my dress, too. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about braiding my hair in two braids, too. Uh, Pamela, do I find shapewear makes me hotter in this weather? Uh, not really. I mean, if... I mean, if you really want my honest answer, it's absorbent. So I'm somebody that sweats and anything that uh, can absorb moisture so that I'm not sweating through to my clothes is actually very beneficial to me. Um, I would rather go somewhere in shapewear than without because I would probably sweat through thin layers of fabric and have sweat marks and that would be worse. What else am I working on, Adele wants to know. I'm working on lots of projects in the background. Um, hopefully have some more new patterns available next week. It's National Chocolate Chip Day. Oh my goodness. Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Yum. <laughs> that sounds like a good excuse to eat cookies today. <laughs> I don't eat cookies very often, but man, that sounds good. Does anybody have any other questions? 
and anybody that can join me for the live premiere, please join me for the three videos that we're going to live premiere right after the podcast today. We'll have a few minutes when the podcast is over. We'll be about a 30 minute break. Yes, Dave, we're going to bring cooking videos back too. I've been talking to Marlon about that and he is agreeable to, <laughs> he is now being agreeable to doing the cooking live videos again. Yes, Fred Not I do have patterns for what I'm wearing and they are linked in the video description as well as the comments or you can search on my website yourself. This is the Thalia crochet dress and these are the Alicia earrings. You can find both of them in my crochet pattern shop on my website or you can find links to both of them in the video description or the comments. Yeah, so Marlon and I, hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully Marlon and I will be developing pattern, our recipes together for the new cooking lives. And I would really like to start writing cookbooks. And if he would like to help me with that, that would be even better. And uh, yeah, and so he and I have some projects that we're working on and hopefully he just sticks with it, right? Uh, the key to me right now is figuring out how to be a great leader and how to motivate him in just the right way to bring out the best in him, which is challenging me and challenging him, I suppose. I suppose there are always different kinks to working with family than not, um, but also there are benefits to it. So I'm really hoping so I'm really hoping that I can dig deep and be the leader that, in, that can inspire him and bring out the best in him and that we can work together on growing um, my business together. So I'm, I'm excited and hopeful and uh, hopefully I can keep him around. <laughs> yes, it would be a ton of fun to have him here, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I gotta figure out the perfect balance. And it takes it's going to take growth on my part to do that, Thea. And so I feel really challenged to figure out how to do all of that and motivate him to the best of my ability, you know, without being stuck on, you know, family stuff. So it's I'm definitely challenged, but I'm excited. Um, what is the shawl that's a lot of colors made with medallions? Um, not sure there's a couple if you're talking about crochet shawls you could definitely uh narrow the search in my crochet pattern shop and look for shawl patterns and see which one rings a bell to you maybe it's the majestic skies but um i don't know there's uh several there's the elena crochet shawl too those are both uh, motifs that are multicolor. thanks patricia i try i'm not the greatest but i try Thank you, Dave. The new one I'm making now. Uh, oh, it's not done yet, Pat. That the one, uh, that's the one that's not done yet. I have three or four patterns that are yet to be released. And so I think that you're asking about one that's not done yet. That will be called the Apollonia Wrap. And it's just, got several hours of work left to finish it and then several hours left of writing and editing and uh, photography and all that good stuff but it's definitely coming definitely thanks for your interest in that one it'll be called the Apollonia thanks Frida yeah I've got a couple of dresses a couple of tops and the um, and that wrap all coming right now I think that's it maybe <laughs> oh no and there's a bag coming and probably more and then i've got to work on lots of videos too because i want to not only make videos to go with all of the new patterns but also fill in the gaps of any patterns that i have forgotten to make videos on um yes michelle that's coming too oh that's wonderful christine yeah, I have that whole bin organized on the other side of this wall with things that I pulled from my closet a while back for doing crochet on fabric, and those will be coming too. Joan would love a knit pattern of the dress I'm wearing. That would be really pretty too. Yes, I would definitely like to uh, make a knit dress as well. Good suggestion, Joan. 
All right, so I know Judy just posted a link a minute ago, and I also have links in the video description and in the comments. If you have the time or the interest, I would love to have you join me for the live premiere of the three-part video series for the Brooklyn Crochet Shawl, which will start airing in 30 minutes here on YouTube, and every 15 minutes thereafter, parts two and three will air as well, and I will be live in the chat so that we can watch the video together, and if you have any questions, you can let me know, and if you are looking for the left-hand version of those three videos, they will also be uploaded at noon today, and if you don't already have the pattern for that beautiful shawl, you can find it at the link as well. It's called the Brooklyn Crochet Shawl, and it takes two balls of Be So Sporty yarn if you would like to find some beautiful colors. I have lots of those in stock as well. Thank you. Oh, and I added something new to the intro and outro of the videos. When you watch, you'll have to see, I was able to figure out, you know, in other videos that you watch on YouTube, how they pop up that word subscribe and you watch them click the subscribe button, then click the bell. It's like an animated GIF. I figured out how to add it to my videos. So you'll see it in the intro and outro in my new videos today. So as a video editor, I am quite excited to have a new skill today, so you can see that with me too. But thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed the show and tell, the chat with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. If I can, I'll see you in a few minutes, and if not, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye-bye.